So what is an extreme material? On the uh, left-hand side, you see diamond. That's one of the extremest materials we are knowing. It's the hardest materials with the highest thermal conductivity, extraordinary properties. If you happen to marry an English uh, prince, then you might get one, and then you can enjoy the beauty of a diamond. But uh, from a physicist's perspective, I want to do other things with that one, mainly using the high hardness of the material. So if you would like to cut something or to drill a hole, that's the perfect material you uh, should choose. However, it's the most expensive hole you ever been made, because in the beginning you have either to marry an English prince or to buy uh, these uh, fancy diamonds. So there are more affordable ways to get to your solution, which is that you st uh, take a somewhat affordable base material and then put just the property of being hard on top of that one. So that is the whole field of coatings to make an extreme, very thin material on a very affordable base material, which can be ordinary steel, which can be plastics, etc. So in order to get there, there are many, many ways, and the simplest way is just to paint something. That is one way of coating, but uh, uh, the wall or whatever you are painting is colorful, but you cannot cut anything with that one. So to make a more interesting layer, the conventional wisdom is, for example, you evaporate, in my small example here, a piece of aluminum, and then you would like to create an aluminum layer on a plastic foil for a bag of chips, for example. If you look the inside, it is all metal inside. And that's a method you can choose. If you look with a microscope onto this structure, then it's more or less like a pile of snowballs, which is okay for packing chips, but for sure not okay for many other applications. Now, if you would like to make this uh, layer of snowballs, microscopic snowballs, into a perfect, very thin layer, you might tempt it to heat the whole thing. But here, as you see, it's plastics, so with the heating of something, that's kind of a limited choice. There are much better ways to do that, and for sure, plasmas are involved. Uh, that's the reason why I'm standing here. So, you do the same thing by the uh, process called sputtering, that you create an extreme material atom by atom, not snowball by snowball, but atom by atom. And uh, the process is rather similar, but you start everything with an iron hitting an aluminum surface, and then the atoms are then traveling on the other side and making a beautiful, very thin aluminum layer uh, for uh, various purposes. Okay, how to do this? You use the plasma state. So the plasma are known to most people uh, due to having the plasma as part of your blood system. But that's the biological plasma, that's the wrong one. Forget this one, think about the physical plasma, which is just the fact if you increase the power which you uh, devote into matter, you start with solid, if you increase the energy, you enter the phase of a liquid, and then further you evaporate the liquid, and if you increase the power even further, then you have atoms uh, being dissolved, you have ionization taking place, free atoms, ions and electrons, a soup, uh, which is called then the plasma state. Now, uh, coming back to our material, uh, problem or material task, with that kind of plasma state, now you can do unlimited things. First of all, you need to create this plasma state, which is just take a small vessel, take two electrodes, then run current through the system, put some gas inside, and boom, the plasma is created, which you see here in a picture in our experiments. So this glowing part, that is the plasma state. And inside, on a microscopic level, on one side, the ions that are created in the plasma are now hitting the surface and then are flying through the whole system on the other side and making our fancy film. In this system, we can modify anything. We can choose uh, one material for this side, we can choose any material on the other side, plastic, steel, whatever, and we can pick the gas we make our plasma from, we can pick the temperatures, unlimited flexibility. And that's the reason why this method is the basis of numerous applications you are all using on a daily basis, but you are not knowing this. And that's the reason why I'm standing here, to tell you this uh, wonderful story of plasma for the daily life. So, for example, if you think about thin film electronics, they are made by plasma to make an electronic layer 
on the flexible substrate. If you have medical applications, implants, etc., etc., if you want to have a fancy coating on this one, these are made by plasmas. If you look on the plastics part inside a car, you have fancy surfaces, they are prepared by a plasma to have a shiny surface, a tactile surface, etc. And if you look in the food packaging, you would like to make permeation barriers inside bottles so that the CO2 stays inside, you make a plasma coating inside the bottle and you drink it maybe on a daily basis, but you're not knowing that you are interacting with a plasma coating which is improving uh, the product as such. This is the case if you make a coating on plastics. If you do a coating then on steel, then you have other products which are influenced by this plasma method. For example, an airplane engine is working efficiently because inside you have the plasma coatings on the turbine blades. If you look at machining tools, they are coated again by plasma coatings. And if you go into Home Depot and see these golden, shiny drill bits, which last much longer than the cheap ones, they are plasma coated. They are not printing this one on the box, unfortunately, but now you know and appreciate uh, the beauty of plasmas if you go shopping for drills. And then for car engines, uh, the lifetime is much longer of cars now. You know that the car is stopping at the traffic light uh, automatically, you can switch it on, because you have plasma coatings inside the car which will work without lubricants, so you can restart a cold engine right away. And a bad example these days are these injection valves, which are only working because these valves are plasma coated. So the beauty of diesel, if I would have presented this one uh, three years ago, you would appreciate this one. But um, that's only uh, made possible by these kind of uh, small uh, coatings inside uh, this engine. Okay. Now, if you take a picture out of a kitchen and try to find which product is there influenced by any plasma process during the making? You have to pin these kind of yellow dots on almost any place. If you remove the plasma science or plasma technology out of our daily life, it's like a time warp back 60 years. You do not have to climb on the trees again, but it's, life would be very much different if you remove that kind of technology. Okay. So, how to tune the material properties? I talked at the moment only about a thin aluminum layer, which is not so exciting if I would like to excite the material scientist I'm working with. So, the important thing is you need to control the species that are coming there to make your thin film material. So, if you talk to the material scientist, they distinguish the materials in the good, the bad and the ugly. So, if you look here on the right-hand side, some electron microscope pictures, and uh, you see that the structure is very much different. Let's start with the ugly. It's a thin layer, but you see pillars, columns, and you can easily imagine if you bend the structure, it will break apart. It might be a brittle ceramic uh, layer which you formed, which will then fail if you put that one on a turbine blade in a, a, a plane engine. Now, if you have the good layer here by another method, then you see it's very much denser, you have a very smooth surface, and that's the stuff you would like to get. In order to control everything, uh, uh, the material structure as it develops, you have two parameters you can control. One is the temperature, as you have guessed, so you condense something, it depends on the temperature, how the structure develops. And the other aspect is the energy of the ions. I told you you have ions in the plasma. These ions are needed to remove the material, but these ions are also impacting your thin film that you're growing on your turbine blade. And the secret of the whole process is that you tune these two parameters so you can lower the temperature, you increase the energy of the iron, and then you get to this perfect kind of material that the material scientists are so happy about. Okay, how to get to the good? First of all, you have uh, two steps. The first step is you have to reduce the pressure. So because if I create species on one side and I would like to transport them on the other side, I'm losing everything if the species I'm creating here are scattered away, lose their energy when they travel to the other side of my uh, chamber where the thin film is being created. So 
If I'm the plasma and the cameraman is the substrate, then you are all the way. I have to evacuate all in order to make a good film, thin film, from myself on the other side of the room. If everything is evacuated here, then I have no means to make a plasma from anymore, so I have to help the system. And this can be done by small magnets, because the electrons as part of these plasmas are bound to magnetic field lines. I can trap the electrons by magnetic fields. Now, and if you then look inside the plasma, you do not see this faint image as before. You see a very bright, shiny spot here. The shape is completely different because the shape is determined by the magnetic field that you're applying. And it just looks plain beautiful. If you look inside these systems, you have this plasma volcano at the bottom. They create everything, and then the species are traveling on the other side. Uh, and. Uh, uh, you have here again the picture of this plasma torus if you look onto uh, the actually part where the atoms are being generated. Okay, so this was uh, already one step, and this is already the basis of again numerous applications. And I brought you two examples one very large and one very small. The very large one are skyscrapers, 500 meters in height or even higher than that. They are all covered by glass. If you would have take ordinary glass, your heating bill would explode. No way. Nowadays, all modern glass windows are coated by plasma coatings as heat insulation layer. You cannot see them because you want to look through a window, but they are there and keep the heat inside, so it's not an issue to have a huge glass facade. But they are also showing up in very small items like razor blades. If you get the more expensive razor blades, which are more smoother, which last longer, they are plasma coated. This hard coating is there on top of these razor blades to make them affordable. So the second thing which you need to do is you would like to have more ions to make even better films. And in order to get there, you need to supply more power to the system. You have to make the plasma much more stronger to have all the atoms be ionized to make the perfect material. So in the ordinary case, you apply the power the continuous time, but in the new method we are exploring uh, for the last eight years, you're applying the power in very short pulses, and then you wait 99% of the time, and then you fire the next extreme high power pulse. So what is high power? Let's compare this one with other systems that you are knowing. And uh, this is the scale now in megawatt per square meter. Let's start on the left-hand side. So in a flight engine, the thermal load on the surface is one megawatt per square meter. If you look at the re-entry of a space shuttle, the surfaces experience a heat load during re-entry of one megawatt per square meter. So, but our plasmas are on the other side here, these extreme plasmas, and if you look at the power load, it's similar to the engine of an Ariane 5 rocket. So this rocket flies for one minute, or the engine at least, and then you can throw it away. If we, we would do the same thing, we would destroy our complete experiment. So our rocket is running only very short time, namely 200 microseconds, and then we wait a long time, and then we fire the rocket again and again and again and again. So that is the beauty of the process, which makes our uh, material scientist very happy. If you look with a fast camera into the system, you might have expected to see something like this. So this image you have seen uh, frequently times now. But if you take a very fast image, you see that it's not a stable plasma donut, but you see that everything is moving inside. And if you take a very expensive and very fast camera, you see that the plasma is only located on one particular side, and it looks like a reverse flying comet who runs around in circles with a velocity of 10 kilometers per second. So, that's very fancy, but in order to remember the movement, we just coined them reverse flying comets. So, the shape of the comet depends very much on the material that you're using. So, if you take aluminum, then you see the reverse flying comets. If you take titanium as a substrate, you have reverse flying croissants. That's the way uh, we try to memorize the shape of the whole thing. And uh, this is an example for single comets. And the other example are uh, uh, many comets or several comets on this kind of donut-shaped uh, plasma shape, uh, depending on the uh, parameters.
So that is the beauty of the process. And uh, to understand this, you have to go very deep into plasma physics and you have to understand how these plasma get unstable. And the physics is the very same as the instability of the largest plasma we have in our neighborhood, which is the sun. So if you have images of the sun, you see flares, eruptions, etc. This is also plasma which becomes unstable and very similar things are happening in our systems. Okay, so this makes a material scientist extremely happy because these comets producing the right ions, amount of ions at the right energy to produce only the good material. And therefore we are happy, they are happy and we get to better products. So let me summarize. The vision extreme plasmas for extreme materials is that we have all the knobs at our hand. We can use a complete periodic table with an unlimited flexibility in combining excellent surface properties with affordable bulk materials like ordinary steel or plastics. Uh, therefore, you can enable all these great products I just showed you in the beginning. And this, at the end, saves, of course, energy and natural resources. And that should be a very important goal of science in general. Thank you very much.